morning, good afternoon, everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here with an urgent update here. This is regarding Tropical Storm Barrel, which formed last night as we were predicting. We said yesterday that this was likely going to be forming into a tropical storm, and it has actually strengthened even faster than I anticipated now. So this became a tropical storm late last night, and we can expect this to maybe even become a hurricane before the end of today as well. This has strengthened rapidly. Now we're at 65 mile per hour winds with this storm here. It's got a forward motion at 23 miles an hour off to the west here. A lot of open water left over the region and a much more favorable environment out ahead of it. So I do think rapid strengthening is possible. I do think that this may very well even make it to major hurricane by the time we're done here. It's even been forecasted, but I think it go even further beyond um, just the 115 threshold that we're seeing now. But also, we still have these other two areas that we're going to watch. We're going to talk about those tomorrow, but we're putting a lot of emphasis on barrel in this video here. So make sure that if you are over towards the Gulf Coast states or planning a trip to the Caribbean or you're in the Caribbean right now, you need to be paying attention. Right now, it's a little bit uncertain as to where things will go beyond the uh, Cuba Yucatan Strait here, as I like to call it. But beyond that point, I don't know, like I said, towards the Gulf Coast, I have no real uh, certainty as to where this goes beyond that point. There is a chance that you could be in the path, but as of right now, there is no clarity. It's just too far out to tell. If we look at the storm on the satellite, though, it's very distinct. It's pretty easy to see just where Barrel is. You can see the counterclockwise motion, and you're starting to see what might be the beginnings of the eye beginning to form with this so it wouldn't surprise me if we start to get towards that 70 mile per hour threshold within the next update this most recent update was about maybe 15 to 20 minutes before i started doing this video so we got a little ways to go before the next one but i wouldn't even be i would even go as far as to say i wouldn't even be surprised if we end up seeing this get upgraded to a hurricane by mid-afternoon today it really just depends on how this continues to strengthen, which it's on a rocket trend, if I were to say so myself. But in any case, though, we're looking for also any sort of things that can slow it down. As far as wind shear is concerned right now, it doesn't look like there's too much that will inhibit it. In fact, I actually see a feature that could help it in regards to the upper levels. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. But in any case, you can see that there's not much in the way of dryer that's going to help inhibit this thing. So, like I said, I think this has the means to strengthen maybe even further above Category 3. Could even be Category 4 right now. Like I said, it's a little bit early to give into that kind of speculation. Same, same kind of goes with the track right now. But there are some signs that I'm a bit more concerned about as well as we continue to go forward. Looking at spaghetti models here. We're going to actually have to go back a page. But here's a better look at it on satellite. You can see how it's really starting to grow here at this point. You can see this reaching major hurricane status by the time we end up passing the Greater Antilles here. We already have Tropical Storm and Hurricane Watches in effect. And this will most likely end up being a thing as we go towards the Dominican Republic, over towards Haiti, Puerto Rico, and even towards Jamaica, where I'm concerned about potentially a direct landfall. They are well within the cone at this point. And then we have to look and see what happens with Cuba. Good thing is, based off of what I'm seeing from here, on Tuesday, it does look like this is on a weakening trend just a little bit. So, or after Tuesday, I should say. But in any case, though, I still think we have a pretty powerful hurricane. I do think that this may go beyond, again, the forecasted 115 miles an hour that's in play right now. I do think that this could go pretty close to category four potentially and there are spaghetti models that kind of agree with me on that but like i said it's very early to tell but this is like i said this is a very very conducive environment for tropical development right now for a number of reasons here but here are the uh, intensity spaghetti models large majority of course have this at cat 3 right now and there are a couple that do push towards cat 4 right now this is in the early stage, of course, and as we get towards about 60 hours out is when I think this storm may peak on its strength here. It doesn't seem like it will maintain Cat 4 for long, and partially, there's other complications that go along with that. Whenever you get a bigger hurricane like that, you, you tend to have stuff like eyewall replacement cycles, which can 
temporarily weaken the storm and then it'll re-strengthen, which is why you'll see these little trends like this sometimes go dip, go down like this or dip down and then come back up like that. So we'll have to see how things pan out from that. But this storm seems like it does a really good job of maintaining its strength here. So this is why I'm, this is another reason why I'm kind of concerned about the U.S. and Mexico as well. But in any case, though, here is a track Here's a closer look at it. You can see clearly spaghetti's track spaghetti models the track is mostly favoring over towards jamaica and then as we go past jamaica here there it's there's a number of models that are kind of going towards the yucatan there's some that go right past the straight between the yucatan and cuba i'm very concerned as to where this would go here especially if it goes into the gulf with minimal land interaction here that could be big trouble so again, like I said before at the beginning of the video, the Gulf Coast, you need to be paying extra close attention to this. But right now, there's just not a lot of certainty. One thing that is certain is that the sea surface temperatures are going to be a big part in what helps this storm strengthen rapidly and helps it maintain its strength here. We have waters over towards the Caribbean right now that are near 90 degrees. Some areas are getting above 95, maybe even pushing towards triple digits, especially over towards the, the uh, Keys here. But in any case, we're in an area that's been relatively untapped and there's potential for strengthening. There's also potential for maybe a major impact here pretty soon from the looks of it. So we continue to go forward here looking at the wind shear. And it's interesting the feature that I ended up noticing here. I don't talk about this much. I definitely didn't talk about it heavily over the source of the la over the course of the last year the season was a little slow too to go along with it but this feature that i'm starting to pick up on right here and i'll draw it out for you but this right here this is what you would call a tropical upper tropospheric trough or tut in the weather world and what this will end up doing is this trough even though there's going to be wind shear here it's going to kind of help uh, increase the amount of vertical development, which is essential for storms. The stronger the storm, usually the taller the storm, or the taller the storm, the stronger the storm. Like with severe weather, you'll often see storms that'll reach about 50,000 feet whenever they're producing large hail, tornadoes. Stronger updrafts are the big reason as to why that is. So with this, we could get some extra lift around here, and this is what also will help aid in rapid strengthening with this storm here. So with this feature, wind shear is not going to be too big of a problem from, from the looks of it. We can hope that maybe things change just a little bit. This trough moves in any, dire any particular direction further to the south here. I do think that this could help slow it down just a little bit. But right now, I'm not too optimistic about it. As much as I hate to say it, I try not to be too negative. But I, I'm also going to try to tell you the truth as best as I can. Because, I mean, these are, these are forecasts. These are, not, these are not guarantees. But in any case here, from what I see, at least starting out, we don't have anything that slows it down. But as we continue to go further along here, we do get a little bit of wind shear here, which gives me some semblance of hope that it does slow it down slightly. But once it gets past this region here with the wind shear starting to weaken as well, that's when the questions start to rise as to where it goes next. The wind shear is strong enough it could push it back down to the south towards, of course, let's say the Bay of Campeche over towards the Yucatan. But if it maintains itself well enough and the wind shear weakens, we're back in the straight here. Like I said, a lot of questions regarding the track here. So I do have my share of concerns with that. Another inhibiting factor that could come into play a little further down the line might be the dry air here. Sometimes we get dry air coming off of the West African coast here, but this is in such a favorable environment in regards to moisture that I don't expect a lot of interaction from that dry air to really do much of anything starting out. Now, as this travels further off to the, um, off to the West, maybe we could get a little bit of help. And I do think that if there's any chance for things to be slowed down by, for things to slow this down, I think it would be dry air right now. But of course, with the pretty much bath water that we have towards this region, kind of leaning towards it not. Also, another thing to make note of here is there is a system that we're watching behind this, the next invest area. 
this actually is really starting to show pretty well on models now so we may have our next name storm with that again we'll have more details on that in tomorrow's video but for right now it looks like things are starting to get busy and they're getting busy very fast so like i said active hurricane season was expected so this is the time to be preparing and you need to be watching if you're in a hurricane prone area throughout the rest of the season because I was not expecting anything to form out this far to this, the east this early. It's very rare that that happens. That being said, we're going to look at a couple of different features here on a particular hurricane model I like looking at. This is the HAFSA. And what we're noticing here already, it's a very strong storm system. And what I've noticed is the low pressure drops off tremendously once we get into monday here i think this is where the storm will really start to be this is where the storm will be at its strongest most likely so we get to a pressure of about 976 millibars which is usually indicative of a major hurricane at this point at its lowest i saw it drop all the way to 973 before it makes its close interactions with land here the good news is as it gets closer to land here it does look like it weakens slightly this could be partially due to an eyewall replacement cycle but here's jamaica right here and this is heading into july 3rd this will be towards mid-afternoon in the u.s time where we could see a potential landfall here this quickly passes over the region and then we see it over open water once again the question will be just how what kind of shape will it be in after the fact what speed will this be moving at like i said so many questions so many variables to look at in regards to this storm from that point if we look at this on satellite it's act on a simulated satellite the uh, simulated i4 here it's actually absolutely incredible to see it so this is what our storm is looking like right now on satellite so we continue to go forward what i made note of is look at how much convection we have here around the center of circulation as we continue to go forward the brighter the colors here the colder the cloud tops which means those storms are reaching higher up into the atmosphere and just look at how it really starts to take off here Again, this is right around towards January or July 1st. Sheesh, what a botch. But as we continue to go forward here, look at that. Right around that center, you can see an in, a massive increase in convection there. And we continue to see that all the way up until it gets closer to land here. Makes a close pass here with Hispaniola. And then after that, here's Jamaica where we could, where we have an increased chance of maybe a landfall occurring there. And after that point, we'll have to see if the storm holds out. There could be, like I said, there is a chance that there is some wind shear that may work against it as we head towards July the 4th. But we'll have to see if this holds together or not. There's some models that are kind of going towards this weakening. There are some that hold it together much better. And then after that point, what happens? Do we go here off to the west a little bit more? Do we take a turn into Cuba? Or do we get into this straight here and we have a new problem on our hands? So a lot of questions to be had. We'll get answers, of course, as we go over the course of the next couple of days. I'm probably going to be making updates on this once every... It's probably going to be once a day at this point. Depending on how things pan out, which, like I said, I'm anticipating a lot more in the way of strengthening and looks like, unfortunately, some land interaction, so... For all of you that are within the Caribbean, Gulf Coast, make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you're smashing that like button, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that share button. We're going to do all that we can here to keep you updated. But until then, you guys take care. Have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you soon.